I'm Starborn. Remember to be a star. You have to shine your own light, follow your own path, and not be afraid of the darkness because that's when stars shine brightest. And in fact, we are going to be talking about a lot of light on today's show because if you've been looking at our website, starborninstitute.org, you'd already know that the title of tonight's show is Bright Ideas. And that's what you could be full of as we face the new year because uh, on Saturday we are having a new moon at two degrees of Aquarius. And Aquarius rules the future. So you could have uh, some great ideas for your future this year. And despite it being a year of ups and downs, there could certainly be plenty of opportunity for you to make a bright idea come true. And that is because <clears throat> uh, there are so many planets in Aquarius. And since Aquarius rules the future, it rules invention, it rules things that are ahead of their time, and it rules music and electricity, and it rules space and satellites and aviation. And um, certainly, as I said, invention. And so the sign of Aquarius is really strong under this new moon. And so since the ruler of Aquarius is Uranus, and Uranus is the planet of sudden surprising change, there can also be sudden changes that can happen to you at any time this year. So you have to somehow allow for that as well. And for instance, on last week's show, <clears throat> we have a, a saying in television that television follows Murphy's Law. And Murphy's Law states that if it can go wrong, it will. And that's what happened last week. The reason why I'm telling you that is that there was a, a white thing behind my head. And that is called a whiteboard. And you really need that in television because I make two shows every week. You see a show like this, which is going to be a full show with a lot of predictions. But the show before that is a, a shorter version, and it is checking to see that all the technical things are right. And the first thing that you do, if you're using a camera, is you have to white balance the camera. Because if you don't, you won't get true color. And you've got to have that first. <laughs> and so I white balance the camera by zooming in on a white um, object and um, then hitting the white balance button and that's what does it, the camera white balances. Only I forgot to take it down for the second show which was the full show. And so uh, I apologize for that. <clears throat> that was my sudden surprise and the problem was is that I didn't discover the mistake until after the show was shot. And as I was reviewing the show I thought, oh no, how could you do this? <laughs> and so I was going to reshoot the show last week because it had a whole year's worth of data. And those are very hard shows to do. It takes me two months to write the two big shows at the beginning of January every year because they're covering a whole year, not just a week. <laughs> and so um, <clears throat> lots of writing and lots of memorizing to do. But I was afraid that my voice would not last through a complete reshoot of the show. And so uh, I didn't think that was fair to the sun signs that come at the end of the show. I mean, if I didn't have a good enough voice for them, they would miss it. So the show last week, I checked it with the written, handwritten script. All the information <clears throat> was exactly the way I had written it. So the information was there, but so was the whiteboard. Ah, so, since this is a year of ups and downs, and television follows Murphy's law, that it, if it can go wrong, it will. Believe me, over the many years I've been doing this show, there have been a lot of things that have gone wrong. And I still believe that we should always go forward. And that <clears throat> Winston Churchill said it just right in the middle of World War II, when he said that success is not final, and failure is not fatal. He said it's having the courage to continue that really counts. And so that is a good thought 
to have in mind as you go forward this year because the first new moon on Saturday is in Aquarius and that sign is really loaded but that sign depicts sudden surprising change. One good thing about making a big glaring mistake like I did last week is that, you know, I think sometimes the bigger the mistake, the more you learn from it. <laughs> because I don't think I'll ever do that again. <clears throat> so uh, I just do apologize. But the reason why the sign of Aquarius is so loaded is because the sun and the new moon there are there on Saturday at 2 degrees, so they're conjuncting. And when planets conjunct, that means they're in perfect alignment, and that doubles their strength, because not, there's no energy that can get in between something like that. But Venus and Saturn are also in Aquarius. And Venus is at 23 degrees of Aquarius. Saturn is at 25 degrees of Aquarius. They, too, are conjuncting within their orbits. They're in almost perfect alignment. That makes the sign of Aquarius very strong. And that is a positive indication about your future. And so this is a time when your bright ideas should go forward this year. Now, I don't think it's always going to be easy, but I don't think there's anything stopping them either. And particularly if you do learn from your mistakes, and particularly if you allow for sudden change. But if you just keep going, I think that sometime in the last three months of 2023, you're going to make it. And so, <clears throat> this is a time when you could make it because of very clear communication. And the reason why is that there are five planets in the air signs. There's the four in Aquarius on Saturday, the Sun and Moon, Venus and Saturn, and they are all trining Mars in Gemini. And they're all direct. And those five planets are trining the sign of Libra. Well, that's important <clears throat> because in October there will be a solar eclipse in Libra, and solar eclipses always denote new beginnings. And so something that you might be able to put together, some bright idea of yours, as long as you're able to communicate that. In other words, remember that Mars and Gemini, Gemini rules communication, is favorably aspecting the new moon and all the planets in Aquarius. That good communication that you could have by reaching out and sort of getting out in the public arena and talking to people about your good idea, you know, that could result in getting the endorsement or the approval of somebody higher up or who is more experienced who can really help you shape that new idea and put it into a form that could even result in a very good partnership later on in the year. And so the reason for that is that Venus is conjuncting Saturn. Well, Saturn is the planet of experience. Venus is a great planet. And so, you know, your prior experience in doing something is probably what's behind a bright idea of yours. I mean, maybe you feel you really can, you know, it's a bright idea that really can work. And so by talking about it and emphasizing your prior experience, you could get the approval of somebody pretty high up or an endorsement from somebody that could help guide you on your way to making that bright idea really pay off, perhaps in a very nice partnership or a legal contract by the time of the solar eclipse in October in Libra. So there's all of that to think about right now. However, there's also five planets in the fixed signs. And you know, fixed signs don't budge. And the reason why there's five, plans, five planets in the fixed signs is because Aquarius is a fixed air sign. And its ruler, Uranus, <coughs> is squaring it from Taurus. And Taurus is a fixed financial sign. And Uranus is retrograde today, but it isn't going to stay like that. And it's the only retrograde planet left all the other planets are direct right now. But Uranus will go direct in a few days. And what, since it's squaring the very sign it rules, Aquarius, where all these good planets are, it simply means that there can be some sort of um, delay or something that hasn't quite been worked out that represents a financial problem. 
and uh, I, I don't know if the problem is with you or somebody else. Um, uh, whenever you're starting something new, mm, the budget can always, you know, not quite stretch far enough. But whatever there, there is, there is some sort of financial problem that is lingering and has to be cleared up. And once it is, then your bright idea can really take shape and get going. So you've got to try and work out some sort of financial problem that has been in the background of your life and resolve it. Uh, because that could be standing in the way of your very bright future. So don't let that happen. And the reason why you really need to go forward and have confidence in your bright ideas is because throughout the spring there will be no retrograde planets. And that means with all the planets in the universe going direct, you're going to be swept along in the tide of activity this spring. You're going to be busier than you think. And I think that most people are really going to enjoy being busier because uh, that makes them more productive and your communication can work better. I mean, just because one person likes your idea, that shouldn't stop you from going around and talking to other people about your bright idea. You never know what kind of cooperation you could get right now, which would be great. And so you really have to sort of have faith right now in the future under this new moon which in Aquarius which rules the future because not only are the five planets in the air signs trining each other, but there are three more planets in the earth signs that are also trining each other. Because that Uranus that's squaring all the planets in Aquarius, well by itself, it is trining Mercury and Pluto in Capricorn. So there's only ten planets up there, five of them are in air signs trining each other, and another three are in earth signs trining each other, uh, I don't think you can lose. But you do have some sort of financial constraint or, or some problem that's been lingering that's got to be cleared up in one way or another. Now, it would really behoove you to, to take that seriously and find a way to do it. And then just go forward after you've done it. And the reason why is that your bright idea is well aspected for success. And um, I don't know how long that's going to take, but it looks like you should, re your bright idea should result in some sort of very compatible partnership or legal contract uh, no later than this fall. I mean, it might happen before then. But, and why would a new beginning be so well favored right now? Well, because Jupiter is in Aries. And Aries rules new beginnings. And Jupiter's going to be in Aries until May. And so this is why you've got to get up and get going on your new idea. Or your bright ideas. Because uh, despite ups and downs, or despite financial setbacks, uh, there's just too many indications that you could succeed. So I would not procrastinate. <laughs> I would get going on that if I were you. Okay, what does this mean to all 12 of the sun signs? Well, Aries, for you, with Jupiter in your sign, I think you can see all kinds of possibilities right now, Aries. And you can be excited about every bright idea that you've got. Well, why don't you just go out and talk to people about that? The reason why I suggest that you sort of do that in person, I mean, you can contact people over the internet, but talking to somebody would help you put your best foot forward because Jupiter is in your sign already. I mean, you could be very charming to a lot of people right now, Aries. And on top of that, <clears throat> I think that uh, since Mars is your ruler and Mars is in Gemini, and that is sextiling your sun, but that Mars in Gemini is trining all the planets in Aquarius, which are also sextiling your sun. So believe it or not, if you show some initiative, you're going to be pleasantly surprised with your good communication skills that there are perhaps quite a few people that are eager to hear what you have to say, Aries. 
So if I were you, I would not hesitate. <laughs> you should get up there, and uh, Jupiter's only going to be in your sign until May, but that's almost half a year. I mean, so, you know, try to be as busy as you can this spring, but don't waste time. Always aim for developing bright new ideas, because uh, that could work out real well for you. And Jupiter is only in a sign once every 12 years. So this is a year, remember, when it could be a turnaround year for you. But you've got to get out into the late work area, so I hope you do right away. Good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Taurus? Hmm, Taurus. Well, Taurus, it's not too good that Uranus is squaring the new moon, the sun, Venus, which is your own ruler, and Saturn in Aquarius on Saturday. <clears throat> Uh, because it indicates that there is some sort of a financial matter that uh, you're involved with in one way or another that is perhaps preventing some bright idea from developing or preventing some other people from being able to make new beginnings. Well, you have Jupiter in Aries right behind your sun sign, Taurus. That's a very nice place for it to be because when Jupiter or Venus are right behind a person's sun sign, it offers a lot of protection to them. And so um, this is a time when if you have a bright idea, Taurus, you should resolve any financial arguments or problems that you're involved with. And if I were you, the way to resolve them is just accept the terms. Just say, okay, you know, if, if you've got a problem with the tax man and they are saying you owe him a a little bit more taxes, just pay it. And you could say, why? I could just stand here and fight it. Not really. If you don't pay taxes, they give you penalties for that. So it's just going to cost you more money. But on the other hand, if there's any financial problem that has been in limbo or has been controversial, it would really pay you to end it and accept whatever terms there are and walk away. And the reason why, Taurus, is you have so much to gain if you, can, if you can resolve a financial issue right now. You have far more to gain than what, what the amount of money is that you are uh, in controversy about. And the re it's because your future, you could have, your future is calling you. I mean, your ruler, Venus, is in Aquarius, and Aquarius rules the future. And on top of that, that Uranus is, you know, it's enjoying itself, or it really will in a few days when it goes direct in your sign, because it's being backed up and trined by Mercury and, and uh, Pluto in Capricorn. And so if you were ever thinking of starting a business or, um, or providing for your retirement or um, improving your health in some way, uh, with both Mercury and Pluto trining your son, um, you would have a tremendous amount of backup in succeeding uh, on those things. And um, a Taurus is a practical sign. You know, not, they not only like their comfort, but they like their security. And so I think that you should just, with your bright ideas, just move forward. If you start something new pretty quick, Taurus, uh, you are going to do better this year than you think. And the reason why is that if you can get something up and running after you resolve a financial issue um, and, and put it behind you, if you can get something sort of up and running um, by May around your birthday, then Jupiter will come into your sign. And remember, that only happens once every 12 years. And then you're just going to be on a roll. That's why I'm telling you, you have so much more to gain from your future actions this year than trying to hold on to any controversy, even if you think you're right. As long as you hang on to the past, you're preventing a better future for yourself. And you don't have anyone to blame except you for that, because you can end a financial problem tied to your ta past simply by saying, okay, fine, and then settle it and walk away. Because uh, Jupiter in a person's sun sign uh, means that there's going to be expansion in their life. 
And so you're looking at that by May and for the whole rest of the year. You know, Jupiter stays in a sign about a year. So it'll be part of next year too. So you've, you, you're looking at expansion, but you have to cut some ties to the past first. And, and as Taurus is a little bit stubborn about money, this is not the time for you to be stubborn about yesterday, no matter what it involves, because you're preventing yourself from going forward in your future. That doesn't make very good sense because your future is really looking very bright right now, so good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Gemini? Hmm, Gemini. Gemini, finally, you are sort of in the right place at the right time. And the reason why is you can't lose, Gemini. There's four planets in Aquarius on Saturday. The Sun, the New Moon, Venus, and Saturn. And they are all trining Mars in your sign. And together, those five planets are trining the sign of Libra. So there can be uh, some rather good fortune uh, coming from a bright idea that you have, Gemini. Now, your sign rules two of everything, and it rules part-time and temporary uh, work or short forms of communication and easy transitional change, all of which are highlighted right now. Part of the reason they're highlighted is because of the strong support you have from those four planets in Aquarius that will be trining your sun, and from the fact that along with Mars in your sign, that means five planets are trining the sign of Libra, which trines your sign as well, meaning that you can, if you go out and talk to people about your bright ideas, uh, you can attract very experienced people who could give you an endorsement or could give you some sort of approval and wise guidance. They wouldn't be leaving. They would stick with you and they could really help you form a new partnership or get a great legal contract by the time of the solar eclipse in Libra in October. So uh, you really have to think about, okay, where do I want to be by the end of the year? And what, what bright idea do I want to develop this year? Because uh, you should do that, Gemini. You have nothing to lose by going out and talking to a lot of people. And you would have the energy for that because Mars has been in your sign since last August, but it's leaving in March. So it won't be in your sign after March. And uh, if I were you, I would make use of that Martian energy. And okay, you might be a little too busy this spring, but so will everybody else be. And I think everyone's going to really enjoy it because there's no retrograde planets. There's nothing holding you back. So uh, I wish you the best, Gemini, and uh, just get out there and do what you do best, which is communicate, because you have a lot to gain from that, so good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Cancer? Hmm, cancer. This is a time, Cancer, <clears throat> when I think that, yes, you too can be full of bright ideas. They may center a little bit more around your heart's desire. And what is the... Uh, the heart's desire of a cancer, well, it's it's centered in their home. <laughs> you know, it has to do with real estate or setting down root, roots or um, some sort of a move or even some sort of remodeling. But it's generally centered around the home cancer because your sign rules the home. So there can be uh, very beneficial changes in your home this year. And if you have some bright ideas about how to manage that, maybe by redecorating, or maybe by putting a new addition on your home, or maybe about just cleaning all the things in your home, and maybe, you know, donating a few of them, Cancer, you could do that. Cancer is the sign of thrift. So Cancer save everything. They even save string. They save old bags. They save anything that can be recycled because recycling is ruled by your sign, Cancer, and you're good at it. So <clears throat> this is a time when you don't have to, you can communicate with others, but you really have to sort of um, draw on your strengths. And I think that you should anticipate change in your home or among your family members. Uh, maybe it isn't happening to you, maybe it's happening to another family member instead. You should anticipate change, and I would call it, I would describe it as joyful change. It would be something pretty good. 
and it, it may happen this spring, but it could also happen around your birthday or even as late as November, but it would make you pretty happy. Or there is the possibility of some sort of bright idea of yours or of somebody else's that um, interests you. And um, if somebody else is talking about a bright idea, you may decide to endorse that idea or even offer your wise advice and guidance to somebody else who might do the legwork, but with your experience, you could sort of guide them in how to shape that bright idea into something that results in a legal partnership or a contract uh, by this fall. And so um, I think that you just have to prepare for some sort of expansion or if you are downsizing in any way, uh, there's still going to be a, a sense of a better home or being more cozy, um, something that will make you happy. And if you do settle down, there could be a new partner in your life this year, Cancer. And um, uh, you would really enjoy that too. Uh, home is where the heart is for a Cancer. And so uh, I think in some way your, your home is going to change or there can be an expansion among family members, uh, but that is going to make you real happy. And it also means that you could, if you don't have a partner, you could uh, form a new partnership this year, which would be ecstatically happy. It would be a very good choice. Okay, what does it mean to a Libra? I mean to a Leo? Well, Leo, this is a time, Leo, <clears throat> when you can think that your future is pretty far away. And that is because the Sun, the New Moon, Venus, and Saturn in Aquarius are all opposing your Sun, and Uranus in Taurus is squaring your Sun. So that's five planets in fixed signs, and yours is a fixed sign, Leo, and, and, and they're in harsh aspect to your Sun sign. So I think that there is the possibility that there is a financial problem a sort of lingering somewhere in your life. Uh, it could be because of high inflation, high interest rates, high debt. Uh, every, a lot of people have those problems right now. And it also could be because you may be transitioning from a very extravagant lifestyle to one where you, because of these high debts or high inflation or, or, or um, just higher interest rates that are being charged to you, uh, you could be deciding that you have to change your lifestyle, that you have to economize a little bit more. You would be absolutely right about that, Leo. You should do that. And the reason why is that it seems as if somebody's bright idea is um, probably going to happen. It will probably be developed. The aspects are very good for that right now. And you could decide, oh, you didn't necessarily want to be a part of that. Maybe it was just their bright idea and you couldn't see how to be involved with that in any way. So what can you do? Well, actually, the reason why a lot of people's bright ideas can get off the ground is because Jupiter is in Aries. And Aries rules new beginnings. And Jupiter is in Aries is trining your son, Leo. You should make a new beginning. It may not be it involved some, involving somebody else's bright idea, but you should still make a new beginning. And I think that you are going to have to resolve a financial, sort of a lingering financial problem from the past. And just as I told Taurus, uh, just say okay, get it over with. Because you're, well, while Jupiter is trining your son, Leo, until May, uh, that's almost half a year. It's five months. And you could make great strides on your own. You could develop your own bright ideas. You could get help from other people. Maybe not right away. But I don't think you can move too far forward until you resolve a prior financial problem that has been sort of lingering, and, uh, and you've got to clear that up first. 
Uh, but I would do that real quickly. And uh, Jupiter in Aries training your sun means that you could be a little ball of fire right now, Leo. You really could have a lot of energy to get going. So work on your future. And so it may not be somebody else's. Somebody else may want to have their own freedom, and they're going to get it, Leo. You know, if somebody says, well, under this new moon, Aquarius rules freedom, and it opposes your sun. So if somebody comes along and says, I want my freedom, uh, they're going to get it, Leo. But Leo, I wouldn't shed a tear over that. The reason why is you've got a bright future too. It's just that it's you that's got to get it underway. And the only thing holding you back is a prior financial problem that uh, belongs to your past and you have got to get it over with. And then you are just off and running. And I would be if I were you, Leo. Uh, you'll have plenty of energy, so good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Virgo? Mm, Virgo. Well, Virgo, remember I said that people's bright ideas look uh, as if they're really going to get underway, uh, not only because of better communication with others and a possible new partnership coming along, but it can be because there's also three planets in a trine in the Earth signs. And um, sometimes that's easy to overlook because Earth signs are not real flashy people. You know, that's Taurus, um, Capricorn, and Virgo, your sign. And uh, particularly Virgos, they're very modest. You know, um, Virgo is the sign of service to others, of wanting to help others. Okay, so Virgos really don't seek the limelight. Uh, if anything, they're sort of modest and a little bit shy, um, but you couldn't find a harder worker. And uh, one who's always thinking, Virgo is a mental sign ruled by Mercury. So Virgo, you actually have three planets in Earth signs trining your sun right now. Because Uranus and Taurus is trining your sun, and it's about to go direct. It's been retrograde for months, but it, when it goes direct in a few days, there should be some more um, active discussion about money, sort of in a positive way, when Uranus goes direct, because it's trining your sun. It's been trining your sun for five years, Virgo. And so that could occur. But Mercury, your own ruler, and Pluto in Capricorn are also trining your sun. So somewhere you need to go and talk to somebody who's pretty influential or to somebody who's that you've known a very long time, who, who you trust, uh, because they would be more than willing to help you out with a bright idea. And uh, because everybody's bright ideas are pretty well favored right now, there's no reason why you can't start working on your own, Virgo. And so, you know, you, you just need to... Um, I would get over my shyness, and I would go out and seek the wise advice of people. In other words, don't waste your time. Go to somebody who would really is sort of an authority or knows what they're doing or has had a lot of experience for a long time. Tell them what your bright idea is and ask their advice. Uh, they'll, they will give you the courtesy of some very good advice, and they may also give you an endorsement. They may back your your bright idea. So you need to do that while these planets are favorably aspecting your sun sign. I would, I would wait just a few days until uh, Uranus goes direct. Then there are no retrograde planets. So there's no excuse for you not getting uh, underway with your bright ideas, Virgo. So I wish you the best of luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Libra? Mm, Libra. Well, Libra, this is a marvelous time for you. And that's because there are five planets and air signs and they all are trining your sun, Libra. And that is because the sun and new moon on Saturday are conjuncting in Aquarius and trining your sun. And Venus, your own ruler, is conjuncting Saturn in Aquarius. And together those four planets are trining your sun and so is Mars in Gemini. And all five of those planets are direct. And so, uh, Libra, uh, <clears throat> I would be very surprised. In fact, I, 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 in fact, I think you should expect this. Actually, 
that you are going to be out talking to more people, that you are going to be sort of putting out your feelers and um, investigating things. And, you know, you could be thinking of an idea that you've had for a while, and it would be based on your own experience, something you already know how to do, but you might be, in the, your bright idea, you might be thinking of a new way to do it, but you'd be applying your experience from the past. And as long as you can communicate well to others, you have an excellent chance of your bright idea attracting the endorsement or the backing of people that you've known for a while who would say, well, okay, let's work on this. Uh, we think you can make it. And so they would be able to help you. The reason why you have to take yourself seriously now, Libra, is because there's a solar eclipse in your sign in October. And a solar eclipse always denotes a new beginning. And so what does your sign rule? Partnership and legal contracts. And you want to start now and be in a good position to form a good partnership and sign a legal contract no later than your birthday. You should be doing that by then. But you got to get out and, you know, communicate right now and ask questions and, uh, you know, do your homework. Find out things and explore any possibility. You don't know what you'll find until you do that, but I would say your chances of being successful this year are quite good. Also, your chances of forming a, a good partnership this year are very high. So, uh, don't procrastinate, Libra. Get out and communicate. Uh, because nobody is going to be able to help you until you tell them what you want. So I hope you get out and do that. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Scorpio? Well, Scorpio, this is a time, Scorpio, when <clears throat> you could be asking yourself, well, there's all kinds of people with bright ideas. How do I know which one of them will work? Well, Scorpio rules psychology. And Scorpios are pretty good at figuring out where other people are coming from. And they do it real quietly. And they do it through observation. And uh, they do it by trying to find out information about people. <clears throat> because both Scorpios and Capricorns make very good detectives. <laughs> so Scorpio, this new moon in Aquarius on Saturday involves four wonderful planets in Aquarius, the sign of the future, which is why everybody, including you, can have some bright ideas right now. But the four planets in Aquarius, the Sun, New Moon, Venus, and uh, Saturn, are all squaring your Sun, uh, Scorpio. <clears throat> and Uranus in Taurus is opposing your Sun. Well, Uranus rules Aquarius. Aquarius rules the future. And these planets in Aquarius and Taurus are all in harsh aspect to your sun sign under this new moon. That means you may not know who to trust, Scorpio, and that means that you'd have to do a little bit more of your own legwork, or you would have had to really be looking at all sources of information. You may not agree with them, but it would be good to find out what's going on. And you can do that, because Neptune is in Pisces, and it is trining your sun, and Pisces rules things that are hidden behind the scenes. So if there is more information that you want to find out, you probably could do it right now, and it may be wise of you to investigate further on things. But the reason why you should do that is because for you too, as well as the other fixed signs, there is a lingering financial problem from the past that has not been resolved yet. And I don't think you can go forward, Scorpio, sort of with a clean conscience and with complete faith in your own bright ideas until you settle a financial matter from the past. And you might say, well, it's not in my hands. It's in somebody else's hands. Well, if you're at all connected with that other person, then it's just as much in your hands because you're connected to it. And so you've got to decide a way to resolve a lingering financial problem that could put a constraint on the bright ideas that you have for the future. 
And so um, the eclipses this spring are in the fixed financial signs. So everybody should have their mind on money. But I don't see how your bright ideas can go forward now until a problem, a financial problem from the past is reconciled or ended somehow. Even if it cost you more money, do you realize how cheap that would be for you? Because that's the only thing that is preventing you from being successful in the future. And as each day goes by, it's costing you more and more for you not to be successful in the future. It's the future that counts under this new moon. And so you've got to, you're almost setting up your own demise, I don't mean physically, but financially, by refusing to negotiate a financial problem from the past and get it resolved. Now, if you're saying, well, it absolutely isn't in my hands at all, you're still connected to it somehow, Scorpio. You know, that five planets in fixed signs, and yours is a fixed sign, and so is Leo. And, the, and, and your signs are getting hammered by the four, plan, uh, the four planets in Aquarius and the opposition of Uranus and Taurus. Um, so, it, what if you're saying, oh, I don't have to listen to, to you. Okay, fine, you don't. But in April there is a solar eclipse in Taurus. Something's going to get resolved. And in May there is a lunar eclipse in Scorpio, your own sign. And so... Um, I think that you would be more successful grasping the problem and dealing with it now so that you can be more successful in the future with your own bright ideas uh, because you can have them. You know, Saturn is going to go into Pisces in March and join Neptune there and they're both going to be training your son for the next two and a half to three years. And a trine is a very good aspect. Same for Cancer. Uh, they're going to be helped by those planets in Pisces. And so that's why I'm saying you're preventing your future by hanging on to a financial problem from the past or even just waiting for some miracle to happen where it could get solved. Uh, I think, I think you, you're out of waiting time, Scorpio. Uh, somehow you've got to sort of bring that issue to a head and resolve it in some way. And every day you wait is a, a delay in your future. And it's the future that's looking so bright for everybody, including you. Okay, what does it mean to a Sagittarian? Mm, Sagittarius. This is a time, Sagittarius, when you can be full of hope. And the reason why is that Jupiter is in Aries and it will be there until May. And it will be continually trining your sun. Oh, that's good for you. Sagittarius because it, it sort of gives you a lot of um, enthusiasm about making a new start and this new moon on Saturday with four wonderful planets in Aquarius the sign of the future is all about developing bright ideas through better communication and trying to get the endorsement or approval of people who are a little bit more experienced and can help you develop the bright idea. Well, you can do that too, Sagittarius. And um, my advice is go talk to people and, um, you know, take notes if you have to and um, collect information from different people and then compare that information that you get. So you, you sort of have to do a little prospecting for gold, but the gold is actually data or information that you need in order to get your own new beginning underway. And you have between now and May, the whole time that Jupiter is in Aries, to do this. To really get a bright idea developed, well developed. And to the point where it, it's going to go beyond the talking stages by then, and then you'll be involved with how to fund it, or pay for it, or whatever. But you know, as long as you get your information all lined up, uh, that is the precursor to being able to fund it. you got to get the information first. And so, um, this is an excellent time for you to concentrate on your own bright ideas. And Aquarius sextiles Sagittarius. So not only are 
Mercury and Pluto in Capricorn sextiling your sun because they're right ahead of it. But so are the sun, the new moon, Venus and Saturn in Aquarius. They're sextiling your sun too. And Jupiter in Aries is trining it. Um, there's almost no excuse you can give Sagittarius right now for not getting out and exploring the possibilities of one of your bright ideas. You really should go for it. So good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Capricorn? Capricorn. This is a time that your sign is involved in three planets which are all trining each other in the Earth signs because Uranus and Taurus is trining your sun where your sun sign where you have mercury and pluto and uh, they're direct and uranus is going direct in a few days and so there is the possibility capricorn <clears throat> that you can um you can realign your own finances or you can do something uh, that is profitable for you uh, maybe you're going to sell some things well, that would be profit uh, and, and people are selling things online all the time so you could maybe do that and pick up some extra money that way but you're you're more well aspected Capricorn to develop your own skills to um, go forward with a bright idea of your own now as I mentioned last week this is a building year for you okay so you're going to have to go through with, with a very good idea that you have, you're going to have to really develop every step of it this year as you build to something that is going to be very successful next year. You'll get recognition for it. And so um, this is the time when you need to sort of uh, not procrastinate and you really need to take your own self and your vast experience at, at you know, really doing something. Um, Capricorns are very thorough. Uh, they, they don't skip steps. They're detail-oriented. And um, they follow up. If they're wondering about anything, they, they go and find different sources to satisfy their curiosity or, or help with their uh, knowledge in some way. So you can do that too. Um, but I would say have a lot of confidence in your prior experience. And use that, even if it's in some new bright idea that you've got, um, use that to your advantage. And you should be doing that now. Because that new moon, it, oh, first of all, there's three planets and earth signs. So Uranus and Taurus is trining your sun where you have Mercury and Pluto. That's good. It sort of keeps you on an even keel. Capricorn and you can reconcile financial problems pretty easily actually if, if there was anything like an unpaid bill that you needed to get straightened out you could go do it and you'd succeed um, but on the other hand the planets in Aquarius are right in front of your Sun sign and that's being lit by the lights the Sun and the moon Venus and Saturn so um, you should talk to people who are experienced or who are a little bit older than you are that can give you wise advice uh, because somebody is going to be able to say the right thing to you and get you going and then you you may even get their endorsement or their backing um, as time goes on this year so good luck okay what does it mean to an Aquarian hmm, Aquarius well, congratulations, Aquarius. Oh, that new moon on Saturday is going to really light your life up. And the reason why is the lights are there. The sun and the new moon are in your sign, Aquarius. And so is Venus and so is Saturn. And the way they're set up, the sun and the moon are conjuncting each other, which is a conjunction of the lights. That's really strong. And then Venus and Saturn are also conjuncting each other, which means that you could form a wonderful partnership with somebody who is sort of older and wiser or has more experience or is somebody that you've known a long time. And if you got their endorsement and you communicated a, a bright idea of yours clearly, uh, you could spend from now until next October developing it in a way that would really pay off for you by the time of the Libra solar eclipse in uh, on October 14th 
uh, on at 21 degrees of a Libra because it will trine your Sun so you actually have sort of a worry-free spring ahead of you Aquarius where you know you can either just laze around and do nothing which would be a tremendously sad mistake because with so many planets going direct you could clear up an awful lot of things Aquarius it's a little bit like thinking that you have to clean house so that you can get down to what really is going to be important to you in your future your sign rules the future this is one of the best new moons you'll ever have in your sign so you know you 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 gotta sort of pack away the past or let some memories go and only think of how you want to spend your future and what it's going to take to get you there and whether you want partners with you or not and I think the answer is yes to all those things so um, um, don't be lazy now Aquarius uh, you've got a green light under this new moon and that green light could just light you up all the way through to the end of the year when you could be extremely happy with a new partnership or possibly a new legal contract and more money uh, so you know make your time count is what I'm saying okay what does it mean to a Pisces well Pisces this is a time Pisces that um, it, it in the background of your life Pisces I think there is so much going on that no one would believe it not even you and the reason why is that right behind your sign Pisces is the Sun the new moon Venus and Saturn in Aquarius on Saturday and so the you know Aquarius is right behind the sign of Pisces so in the background of your life there is an awful lot going on there's also a lot of light on the background of your life Pisces uh, people can really see uh, what you're interested in or um, they can they can see who you care about or they can see um, who you trust or they can maybe they can be trusting you more than you realize but there are very good things happening in your life Pisces behind the scenes right now uh, particularly under this new moon and it could all boil down to having a bright idea either your idea or somebody else's that you know and you really should listen to bright ideas right now Pisces because boy they even even if they were hard work they would be rewarding for you and they would bring you solid people and even maybe somebody that you could love or who loves you so good things can happen in your life behind the scenes under this new moon Pisces and they all involve your future and so you you really um, you know Pisces Pisces can think of a lot of things from the past and um, your sign rules limitations and so you can remember the things that caused you pain or the or the memories that hurt and all I'm saying is Pisces don't waste a minute on that not this year you, you'll have an opportunity to talk to others later after Saturn goes into your sign about the things that had been worrying you from your past. I think you'll have much better understanding about that as time goes on. But for right now, oh boy, you should be looking at the future. Because the future is really looking at you, Pisces. Um, your future could be much brighter than you think. Uh, because those planets are full of light and they're right behind your sun sign. And that just means that a lot of other people can see that about you too. Maybe they can see your potential. Even if you were shy, sometimes Pisces people are a little bit shy. And so are Cancers. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the potential for a very bright future is headed your way. And it's getting developed behind the scenes right now in your life, Pisces. So I would say as long as people employ better communication and they try to rely on their experience or the experience of people who are maybe uh, more ex 
more experienced and wiser and older than they are, they can do just fine. Uh, so I, I would say <clears throat> you can either keep looking at your past or believe it or not, you can look a little bit over your shoulder at whoever's in the background of your life and realize that represents your future and go for it. I think you would need help from them or encouragement from them, but that's fine. People with bright ideas do need encouragement, uh, whether they've got the bright idea or they're just willing to back maybe your bright idea, fine. As long as people are willing to talk about the future and aim for the future and not waste any more moments on the past. Um, what I'm trying to tell you, Pisces, is that the sun is shining and it's it's sort of in the background right now, but it's really there. It may have been there for a while, too, because Venus and Saturn are in, in Aquarius, too. Uh, that might have been somebody who has cared for you for a long time. So anyway, um, you, you've got to go forward, Pisces. And if somebody else wants you to go forward, I think you should listen to them right now. Um, but make sure that they are trustworthy first. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. Remember, you can see the show and read our blog on our website, starborninstitute.org, or you can subscribe to my Karen Campbell YouTube channel every week, and I'll send you the show on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. And please tell your friends about that so that we can sort of get through the ups and downs of 2023. And despite Murphy's Law and things, you know, if it can go wrong, it will. Oh, uh, so what? If we stick together, we will do just fine. So hold that thought, and I'll see you next week. Bye.